when you bring students into an environment where they're interested and engaged, then you can teach them all kinds of different things. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's program. My name is Lauren Hurst. I'm your host. Today, we're talking about food security and education. Now, one of the things that is so important these days is developing the skills that are going to be needed in the future to secure agricultural productivity, to do it sustainably, and to make sure people around the world have enough to eat. Now, when we discuss innovation, a lot of people think of technology or they have images of people in lab coats in laboratories peering into microscopes. But what we're going to discuss today is the role that gaming and esports has in educating young people with the skills that they need to make an impact in the agricultural community. Now, to help us understand all this today, we have three guests, and let me introduce them. Uh, first up, we have Claire LeBeau. Uh, Claire uh, manages educational outreach for an esports federation called NACEF. Also with us today is Mary Phillips. Mary Phillips is an educator uh, in Michigan who uses Farmcraft, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second, to educate her kids about STEM skills and how that applies to ag agricultural productivity. And finally today from the State Department, we have Niles Cole. And Niles manages programs related to agricultural investments and innovation around the world. Now, let me go ahead and start. Claire, tell us a little bit more about Farmcraft. What is Farmcraft and how are you engaging young people to teach those STEM skills that are so important for food security? Thank you. So NACEF exists to leverage student interest in gaming and esports to teach them all kinds of skills. And you can see in the background of my screen here, we focus a lot on career skills. And another thing that we're realizing is that when you bring students into an environment where they're interested and engaged, then you can teach them all kinds of different things. And I mean, honestly, what kid doesn't love to play video games, right? There are very few who are not playing Minecraft and other titles. So by teaching them about agriculture and about climate change and food security in this environment that they love, we have them really interested and in really absorbing the material and the information. Um, I think it becomes core to who they are and how they make decisions down the road as well. And this is something, and Mary, let me bring you in on this. I mean, Video games, I've played a lot of video games myself, you know, as a kid and even as an adult. And it never really occurred to me that this may be a great way to educate people. And I would imagine that the notion of bringing video games into the classroom, for example, a lot of people don't get that. But these days, gaming is not only a huge business, uh, but it's also a very important way to teach kids these important skills, the STEM skills, uh, you know, science, technology, engineering, and math. How are you using Farmcraft in your classroom to engage those kids? What, what has been your experience? So you're right, Lauren, that games are a really powerful way to draw students into sorts of content. We know from research that brain uh, playing games optimizes our brain for learning. Now, students don't need to know that. They just know that video games are a lot of fun. Video games also accomplish a lot of the things that we know goes into effective learning, instant feedback. The students know how they're performing in a lot of different ways immediately. That feedback they can use to change their strategy, change their plan approach. And that makes it a powerful way for them to learn that content. Uh, for me, I've noticed that using Farmcraft, one, gets the students interested in agriculture in a way that you typically don't see a lot of elementary students engaged in it. Uh, unfortunately, students still have a very limited perspective of what a farmer does. By bringing Farmcraft into my classroom, the students get to see what the farmers and their community do day in, day out, and the actual decision-making that goes I also notice the students using um, collaboration strategies. They'll start uh, the, you know, each session with a strategy meeting. Okay, what are we going to do today? What do we need to change? 
they'll assign roles uh, to each person. And all of this comes organically from playing the game. I'm leveraging those strategies they already know how to use in video games, and they transfer them into the classroom then without needing a lecture from their teachers. Oh, the teacher is going to talk about teamwork again. You know, that's so boring, but actually they do it. And it's incredible to see that connection drawn across. And Niles, let me talk to you about this for a second. You come at this from the diplomatic side, okay, the policy side, because you are working with the State Department, you manage different programs that are investing and actually funding some of those projects. When you talk about video gaming, and I know that you've been in involved with Farmcraft for a long time now, how do all those skills and how do you, do you consider that a pipeline of people who would be, you know, very good at managing some of these programs when they get off to college and they're entering into the workforce. And how do you see those STEM skills and what Farmcraft does as a benefit to the types of diplomatic programs that you manage? Well, that's a, a really good question. And I like the way you frame that because food is really complex, right? Well, a lot of people don't know where their food comes from. They don't know, as Mary said, how a farmer's decisions impact what's available. And the State Department, we are committed to advancing policies that help farmers around the world use every possible tool at their disposal to grow food and to get that food to the market. So this includes things like biotechnology. This also includes um, technologies that allow crops to grow in inhospitable conditions. And all of that, Farmcraft helps teach students about the system. And maybe in the future, they will be involved in that system because our population is continuing to grow. Uh, in 2050, we may have 10 billion people on the world and we don't have more land to cultivate. And so keeping farms efficient in less than ideal conditions are gonna be absolutely critical for the 21st century. And so that's what Farmcraft is about, right? We are raising awareness of the issues around food for the next generation because food will be a critical issue in the future as it already is now. That's right. Mary, you said something earlier that most students, and I would, I would probably say most people, don't really have an idea of where their food comes from, what's involved with actually producing that food and getting it to market. And when Niles talks about, well, we need a lot of different people to work on these issues. The diversity of experience and the diversity of ideas, that's a very important thing too. And, and one thing that's interesting about online gaming and particular in particular Farmcraft is that it really levels the playing field for a lot of people who otherwise would not have the opportunity to engage in these spaces. So I'm talking about people in developing countries, for example. We're talking about women and girls, okay, and others who may not have access to all of the information that they need, but by going into these online communities, they are able to learn, they're able to express themselves and to build those skills. What has been your experience with that? Have you seen, you know, a lot of people lifted up by using Farmcraft and are able to basically prove themselves and to put their best foot forward when dealing with these issues? Absolutely. One of the draws to using Minecraft in my classroom, whether it's Farmcraft or a different world, is that so many students understand the Minecraft experience and video gaming. And I've had students who uh, have an opportunity to show their peers their very incredible gaming skills. And that's been a way to elevate their status within that peer group. They might be a struggling writer, struggling reader, struggling math student, but here's an opportunity for them to shine and for them to help their peers. I can't say enough, emphasize enough, how very, very important that is to the school experience for so many students. The other thing that's incredible about Minecraft is that an internet connection and a device is all that's needed to access Minecraft education. And therefore we have students with so many different conditions and, and community uh, dynamics, like you've mentioned, accessing Minecraft. Uh, we've had um, you know, dozens of countries represented in the Farmcraft experience. 
and it might be a lab such as mine, but it also might be cell phones around a Wi-Fi uh, router. And we know we're going to hand off some issues related to food security to our next generation. Getting them to think about it now is how we find those problem solvers and the students who are passionate about food. Food is life. Farmcraft is the story that brings in students into those different dynamics into agriculture. And I definitely do see more voices interested than um, what the population of farmers in the United States and in many places uh, currently is. That's right. And this is one thing that's very important. In the United States, for example, there's going to be a very big generational shift occurring, and it's actually occurring right now, uh, with a lot of farmers who are, I think the average age is in their 60s, they don't want to farm anymore, okay? And maybe they are, they're not the best place to adopt a lot of these new technologies that are coming online that will determine how agriculture goes in the future. So there's going to be a big generational shift. A lot of young farmers are coming in. Now, Claire, let me give you the final thought here. Farmcraft 2024 is coming up. Your new season is coming up. How are you integrating, yes, there you go. Uh, how are you integrating new technologies and new innovation? And when I say innovation, it's not just about technologies or drones and that sort of thing. It's also about systems thinking. It's also about management practices. How are you developing new processes of engaging with stakeholders and finding out, okay, is this the best path for us to go with this particular farming venture? All of that really can be defined as innovation. So tell us what's on tap for Farmcraft in 2024 and how you're integrating some of these new processes and technologies into what you're teaching. You know, Lauren, what I love about Farmcraft is what you just described are really complex principles, but in Farmcraft that is boiled down to a fun game that Mary's elementary students can participate in all the way up through older high school students. And that's the beauty of the game is you can incorporate these different aspects into one place. The theme this year is how do you grow more with less? What are the technologies that are available? Let's explore a little bit. What does it look like to do vertical farming or hydroponics or aquaponics or, um, you know, these, these new take advantage of technologies like drones or AI or that kind of thing? How does that impact the food that you eat? You know, I live on the West Coast of the United States and I can drive for hundreds of miles through Central California past farmland. But there are a lot of places in the world where they don't have that kind of land available yet still they have people to feed. And so this year in Farmcraft, we're going to look at that other side of the coin. What can you do with technology if you have limited space or limited resources, which let's face it, we all have limited resources. What do you do with those to maximize the output and make sure that you can feed the people in your country or in your community? That's right, that efficiency aspect is so important. Um, we talked a little bit earlier about the food, water, energy nexus, you know, the, the food and the water and the energy, all that comes together in the agricultural space. So that efficiency and teaching people going forward how to be efficient with those resources that will ultimately uh, benefit the agricultural system. Well, thank you very much for uh, being with us today to everybody. Mary, Claire, Niles, great to have you with us. We will be online again soon. And to learn more about food security and how we address that here at the State Department, go to state.gov, that's state.gov, and there is plenty of information there. Thanks for being with us, and we'll see you next time.